The paradox of the new world ordering. So, I consider myself essentially a conspiracy theorist. Um, and one of my favorite thinkers is Don Beck. Now, this is almost paradoxical probably for most people if you're familiar with Don Beck's work. Because in it, um, he presents the notion that the next step, in a fairly real way, is uh, sort of a new world ordering. Um, and, you know, he takes up the idea that, that despite the fact that when George Bush um, put forward that phrase, i.e., um, I will, we will create a new world order, we will be successful, etc., etc., in 1991, he, he posits that, that, you know, that was picked up by uh, hard right wingers and taken for a, a ride, right? And I sort of agree with that because I can understand the fact that a lot of these people have interpreted over-interpreted some of these claims by some of these people. For example, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, I get the feeling that people like Nelson Mandela really didn't have and don't have bad intentions about something like the New World Order. But on the other hand, a lot of people do. And this is where I become quite conspiratorial. So I'm going to hold this paradox, so stay with me now. Uh, people like um, George Bush and uh, most people in, in big governance have a hand in major corporations and it's just not really in question that a lot of these governments are sliding towards fascism where fascism just is the blending of state and corporation or that's one essential the de de definition for what fascism is, essentially. So we have this, this creeping sort of fascism um, with real ties to sort of Nazism when you really dig into it uh, through secret programs that were established after World War II from people through Argentina. Uh, Jim Mars has done a fair bit of research on this, among others. But so we have this, so hold this, that the people that are preaching this notion of a new world order are oftentimes um, spreading or have the one foot in sort of a fascist-like regime or an encroaching fascist-like regime. So on the other hand, I highly agree, and this is essential, that we are in some way, whether it be fascistic or otherwise moving towards a non-state-like system. It transcends the state. It is global. So this is, the, this is the, the creeping fear that I think most people feel, and rightfully so. If we're going to have a new world order, but a global order, a new ordering of the globe, of peoples, of societies, of cultures, we want it to be good. We must stand up and ensure that, that what happens as a people, as a global community of earthlings, is one that we can morally believe in, that we can stand behind, that we can feel as though we are connected as one person, as one people, not one person, one, one people in unity for goodness, truth, and beauty. We are the ones that can make this happen. We are those people. And so, it is a paradox. What we are stepping into um, must be held in the sense that, yes, we are moving towards a new world ordering, but it can go two ways, at least. One is highly fascistic, and the people that are in power presently seem to want that through corporate-driven systems. Or we can have one that enhances humanity, enhances humanism, enhances what it means to be a being in the universe, despite all the existentialism that that entails, that really we are the meaning creators of this planet. And that, 
you know, there's going to be perspective wars almost necessarily because of the diversity of views on this planet. But as the people that want to take on the reins of this transition, you have to hold that complexity, that chaos, that movement towards something greater. I believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I do.